What do you see here in our first picture? A burning bush. So you know what story this is going to be, right? So we've been reading through this, the Jesus Storybook Bible, and it's gonna, it relates every story in the Old Testament back to Jesus. Right? So this is our story for today. It's God to the rescue. Joseph and his brothers grew old. Do you remember last time we read? It was about Joseph and his brothers, and they went down to Egypt, and they had to find food. Well, Joseph and his brothers grew old, and they died. But their children's children, children, stayed on in Egypt, where they became a very large family. Later on, a new king began to rule. But this pharaoh didn't remember Joseph, and he didn't like God's people. He made them into his slaves, and he beat them, and made them work harder and harder. God's people cried out to God to rescue them, and God heard them. He remembered his promise to Abraham. He would look after his people. He would find a way to set them free. One day, Moses was looking after the sheep when something caught his eye. A bush was behaving very oddly. It was flickering with flames, but its leaves weren't burning up. He came and took a closer look. Moses! boomed a big, big voice, and Moses leapt back. The bush was talking to him. I have heard my people's cries, God said. I have seen their tears, so I have come down to rescue them. Go, go to Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go free. And Moses was afraid. And God said, I will be with you. So Moses went to Pharaoh. To Pharaoh, Moses began. God says, God, said Pharaoh. Never heard of him. But Moses kept going. God says, let my people grow up. Go. Why should I, Pharaoh said. I don't want to, and I won't. So he did so God gave Pharaoh ten warnings called plagues. First, God turned the Nile, the river Nile, into blood, and no one could drink the water. But still, Pharaoh would not let them go. So God made frogs, frogs, yeah. come hippity hoppity hopping everywhere, leaping and jumping in your bed, frogs, in your hair, frogs, in your suit, frogs, all over, everywhere, frogs, frogs, frogs. Make them go away, screamed Pharaoh. Then your people can go. So God took the frogs away. But Pharaoh changed his mind. You can't go. Then Pharaoh sent zillions and zillions of gnats. Gnats, gnats, gnats. Pharaoh said, no. So God sent swarms of flies, flies buzzing. Flies in your eyes, flies in your ears, flies, flies, flies. After that, sickness and horrible boils, huge hailstones, and a storm of locusts, then darkness when it should have been day, until it seemed that the whole world, all of creation and everything was coming apart, falling back into darkness and emptiness and nothingness. But Pharaoh, each time... Pharaoh sitting on his throne there. Pharaoh, each time, said, make it stop, then I'll let you go. And each time God made it stop, Pharaoh changed his mind and said, actually, I changed my mind. I'm not going to let you go. So you can't. Finally, Moses warned Pharaoh, obey God or he will have to send the worst thing of all. Pharaoh just laughed. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so God said, the oldest boy in each family of Egypt must die, but my people will be safe. God told his people to take their best lamb, to kill it, and to put some of the blood on the front doors. See the door? When God passes over your house, Moses explained, God will see the blood, and he will know that the lamb died instead of you. That night, it was just as God said. Suddenly, piercing the darkness, echoing down the corridors of the palace, came a blood-curdling scream. Pharaoh 
was screaming. His oldest son had died. At last, Pharaoh did just what God said. Get out, Pharaoh shouted. Just go. And so, that very night, at that very moment, see the people leaving? Moses and all of God's people left and fled out of Egypt, and they left slavery behind. They were free at last. God's people would always remember this great rescue, and they would call it Passover. But an even greater rescue was coming. Many years later, God was going to do it again. He was going to come down once more to rescue his people. But this time, God was going to set them free forever and ever, free from their sin. And do you know when God did that? When Jesus came and died on the cross, and he sets us free from our sin. That's why Jesus did that. Because we're slaves to our sin until Jesus lives in our heart and sets us free. If Jesus is living in your heart, you're free to love God. And He loves you very much. Did you know that? Let's pray and thank you. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross to set us free. Just like God set the people free, in Moses' time, but much bigger and better. Thank you for loving us. We love you. In Jesus' name. <laughs>